and welcome to the fifth episode of the Hughes Musings podcast. My name is John. And I'm Carol. And we are the Hugheses and this is the Hughes Musings podcast. <laughs> I love how you're putting in your own theme tunes these days. <laughs> I know you just cut them out and put your own ones in anyway. I left last week's because yeah. it made me laugh so much. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So how are you doing, Carol? Whoa, oh my goodness, what a week we have had. It has been jam-packed full of fun and yes. excitement. We've had events, we've had parties, we've had gatherings. Yeah, we've been travelling, <laughs> we had a little hotel stay. Oh yeah, I love staying in a hotel, absolutely love it. It's great, really. isn't it? I, I, I loved it, it was amazing. Yeah. So... I guess we're going to move straight on to uh, what we've been up to this week. Uh, So usually we sort of ask each other what we've been up to, but we've done kind of everything together this week, haven't we, Carol? We have, because we're best friends. Yeah, we are. Just hang out all the time, like bezers. (laughs) Yeah, I always hate it when people say, like... I'm married to my best friend. Yeah, when they say, like, oh, I'm married to my best friend, like... I don't know. Uh, It's always funny with me, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but but I agree. You're not my best friend. You're my wife. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love hanging out with you. That's why we got married. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> no worries. But no, yeah. Like you've got a best friend. I've got a best friend. But that's not related to us being a perfect couple. <laughs> perfect. Well, perfect for each other. <laughs> right. Okay. No worries. Um. Yeah, so we've been up to lots this week. So the week started uh, with a little theatre visit. Uh, oh, yes. We've been, we were plugging it away in the first few weeks of the podcast, but we went to go and watch Glock over at the King's Theatre in Glasgow. Did you have a good time, Carol? I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Although, I realised how much of a modern person I am. Right. Because I was so uncomfortable. I was so squished together. Like, I'm used to the lux. <laughs> All right, so when you say modern, you mean slightly spoiled. Yeah, very spoiled. <laughs> so, like, there was no coffee machine at the little bit that was next to us, so I couldn't have a coffee. Um, there was a person sat obviously either side of me, very close to me. The seat, I didn't really have much of a cushion. Like, I couldn't put my feet up. There was no cup holder. I had my jacket on my knee, my bag between my legs. And when people get in and out, you know, you've got to, like, stand up. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Like, I'm used to a deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so first world right now. Yeah. So, like, the first... I love it. The first, like, 20 minutes, it did... Like, I was so, like... I was, like, adjusting to, like, my environment. Because I'm not used to the theatre. Like, it's not something that I do often. Like, I'm a kind of panto once a year type of gal Mm -hmm. like the theater is not something i do no Um, no we we've been together for a fair few years now and i think we've been to theater maybe three or four times yeah i remember we went to see sophie once yeah we went to see that puppet show went to watch avenue q yeah um we went to watch matilda in the west end we did is that it i think it might be so we've not even seen a panto (laughs) no no, we haven't. <laughs> Until I met you. That's not an accident. Yeah. <laughs> I love panto, especially Christmas. Like, that's what you do. Weekend before Christmas, go see a panto. Yeah, I I just can't get on the whole panto train. I've tried. No. I just can't. No. No, not me. Oh, well, yeah. So the first 20 minutes, I was too busy thinking about, like, theatre etiquette. Where am I sitting? Why am I holding on to my bag? My jacket, my scarf, my cardigan, like, because it was a cold night on the outside, but warm on the inside. Yeah, it was it was raining pretty heavily as well, so, yeah. And, like, it's not a story I was aware of or knew, like, it was all shook up that we went to see. Yeah. And I only know, like, one line of one song, all shook up, uh-huh, or something, you know. Right, okay. Um, so I didn't know how to get into it, but then once I started seeing people I recognised and kind of got into it, I did really, really enjoy it. Good. It was nice. Good. I was singing along. There was, they had some modern songs in there too, didn't they? Well, I mean, there'd be songs that you've heard covered yeah. or yeah. remixed from Elvis songs. I mean, they're all from the same era because they're all from the same artist. Yeah. But but there would be songs that you recognised more than others. Yeah, there was definitely a few that I'd never heard of. Right. Um, And the storyline was a bit meh, but... 
yeah overall i enjoyed it yeah yeah the, what the, did you the, think of it babe you're obviously more into these things so so yeah i mean like the storyline is a bit farcical because it, it does sort of knit together all the other parts of the show like the music and the dancing and all that sort of stuff um and so is it a show that like it was written a long time ago no, no, no. So it's 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 a quintessential jukebox musical. So you take the music of an artist or a period and you put that into some sort of play and that becomes a musical. So um, how old is it though? Do you know what? I don't actually know. Yeah. I probably should have looked that up if I thought you were going to ask those questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I don't know when it was originally written. But it's not that old. I know that. It's, it's, uh, it's... Because it was a bit modern wasn't it? Like Yeah, it came with that yeah. whole jukebox musical trend of right, the okay. 90s and noughties. So, okay. So it's it's not that old, but the music yeah, is yeah. derived from, from older music. And it's a real rock and roll musical. But I really enjoyed it. It was lovely to see. Uh, and like you just said, when you see people you know, and a lot of those guys I did perform with yeah. the year before when we were doing Oklahoma, a lot of people that I didn't know and, and, and you know was blown away by how good they were. It was great. Yeah. Uh, so I had a lovely time. It was really, really nice. I had a little bit of FOMO. Definitely. I can seeing, imagine. Yeah, yeah, seeing everybody on stage. And obviously I've been... A bit busy with new jobs, etc. Um, this year, so I'm yeah, not really... you've got to give up a lot of time to be in the show. Yeah, it's and a real commitment. Considering the fact that you use public transport as well, and the fact that the rehearsals are in Glasgow, it, it was a, a really big commitment for you. Really yeah, big. I mean, so so a rehearsal is ab- about two hours to three hours long on a given night. Um, and then I always had to factor in my travel time as well um, and getting down there and getting back and getting back. Obviously, it's later buses and later trains, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't really get back till midnight sometimes. And if you've got work first thing in the morning, that yeah. was always a bit difficult. Um, yeah, and you've got to wind down after rehearsal because you're buzzing. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, practicing it and all that jazz. Yeah. yeah. But but no, I thought the guys were amazing. It was they were. lovely to see. It was so good yeah. to see yeah. so many great people performing. And then we went to the stage door after. Oh, yeah. Glad handed all the celebs. It yeah. was great. Yeah, we're like, the leading female, we know her, we know her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She came over and spoke to us. I felt very privileged. Yeah. So that was amazing. That was really, really good. Thursday night, we pretty much just chilled. Oh, did we, John? We just chilled. Well, I, I say we, I mean, like, the Royal Wee Carol was very, very busy. Yeah, Thursday night was probably the most stressful night. <laughs> yeah, you had quite a lot to do, didn't you? Yeah, so um, I had Taster Night at Slim and World. Yep. Um, and somehow this tradition has came up that I make sushi. Like, I don't know how, but... And it was the last one with my consultant mm-hmm. um, who's leaving. Um, so everyone was like, oh, I can't wait for your sushi, Carol. Okay, guess I'm making sushi then. Yeah, and, and I couldn't prepare the night before because obviously we're at the theatre, yep. and I was making a gift for them, and I had a few finishing touches to do. So I was like boiling rice, letting it cool, and finishing off the gift, and then running back. And oh my goodness! Yeah, and I was no help whatsoever because I couldn't help you with the gift because I can't do that, and I couldn't help you with sushi because I've never made it before. Well, you say that, but you have, and sushi is so easy. Yeah, but I'd never done it before, and yeah, you're going to take yes. it to taste tonight. I didn't want it to be my terrible half-assed, only done it once if I've done it at all effort. Yeah, at but there was some sushi. left over, and you made a little bit. Yeah, I had a little roll to myself, which was great. I love sushi. Yeah, me too. It's like filling, tastes good, and the recipe is the exact same. The only difference is instead of a tablespoon of sugar, you use a tablespoon of sweetener. Like it's yeah. literally that's the only ingredient that you you mm-hmm. sacrifice, and the rest of it's the same. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So my sushi, we don't do real sushi. We don't do like um, raw fish or anything. We do like crab stick. Yeah, we do like cheaty sushi, yeah. so Western, chicken. Yeah. Li- maybe some tuna sometimes we'll yeah. put in there. And then for the taste of night, there's a couple of vegetarians, so I'll do one that's got like cucumber and yeah. um, carrot and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. In it, which is I nice. bought things for it. I did that at least. You did, yes. You were very supportive. I tried. You tried, yeah. So then by the time I got back from taster and then we normally have like a little picnic after yeah, taster. A little Thursday night treat. Yeah, because I don't like to eat before I go and get weighed because, you know, 
Um, so I normally get some like rolls and crisps and like nice little sandwich fellows yeah. on the way home. And we, we have that. Yeah, so we did that on Thursday night and that was great. And then Friday, uh, we, 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 we were... went to the most modern baby shower housewarming party. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. And we lived like absolute teenagers. We did. So good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I drank. So it was like really sophisticated at first. Like we went in and um, all of her family was there. All of his family was there. All friends. Um... You know, we had like a little cider. We played a quiz and some games. Yeah, and it was all in good family fun and it all felt very, you know, PG. And it was really yeah. nice. It was lovely. Then the parents went home. <laughs> yeah, and then all, of, all the family left. And then, so yeah, we just ended up playing more games that had to do with alcohol. and. Yeah, so the, the girls who were the bridesmaids who mm. are like the aunties um done like games for us so the first one yeah i done the little quotations you can't see them <laughs> i forget <laughs> so they're really good they organized some games so, like melted chocolate bars and put them in nappies and we like passed it around you had to guess that was like the pg version yeah um what was another game we done they had to like, taste the baby food yeah the baby food tasting, so it was, like yeah. traditional baby games but it was like done the family so it was like guys and girls there which was yeah. the pictures I loved on it. the wall as well yeah, really good. done nice little baby quiz. photos. Yeah. It was cute. And then when they started to leave, we drank cocktails from baby balls. <laughs> yeah, and then that started it all going a bit downhill, really. Yeah, then it was drinking games galore. Yeah, and um, yeah, old father to be was uh, living Sloshed. it up, wasn't he? Yeah, I think definitely a last hurrah. Like, mum to be is like over eight months pregnant. Like she is. Very nearly there. Yeah. Yeah. Close. Yeah. yeah. So obviously she went to bed, wasn't drinking. She was like, my hips are sore. I've had enough of looking at you. I'm off to bed. But she done so well. Like she was looking after people and yeah. making sure they're well fed. Amazing. She was amazing. Yeah. Um, But she sat on her yoga ball. Her hips yeah. were definitely... Aching a bit, yeah. yeah towards and the then end, yeah. she retired quite late. I want to say like midnight or something. Did amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah, fair play. And then, yeah, dad was like... This is my last night. <laughs> shots, games, more shots, more games. Let's do this. <laughs> so it's quite good because it was all like my high school friends and like people I've seen at high school. Yeah. Um. So John was like very welcomed into the group. Obviously, oh, you've yeah. met a few people here and there, and you know Graham really well. Yeah. Um. But you got to meet some of my other friends. Yeah. Got got chatting. Got to know people a little bit better, which was great as well. Had a wonderful time. Yeah, it was nice. I was definitely reliving my youth. Yeah. And then we sort of wobbled home. <gasps> Four o'clock in the morning. Something like that. Yeah. Gasp. <laughs> Haven't done that for a few years, have we? Well, abroad it was more common. Yeah, um, but that would do. be like if we didn't have to do stuff the next day. And yeah. My alarm went off at quarter past seven. Yeah, so you had probably the sum total of about three hours sleep. Less than that. Because we came home, I took my eyelashes off, I took my makeup off. Like, I was a good egg mm. going to bed. Yeah. Um, And in the morning, I was like, up. And I, sc- I see when, I'm, when I've had a drink and I'm going out the next day, I scrub myself, like, exfoliating gloves on. Yeah, scrub, because, because you, don't you do not that, want to smell. Yeah, alcohol. you don't want to have that alcohol linger. That's always like something that you're really conscious of. Yeah, um, I was really lucky though, but I didn't come out with you when you went outside um, for fresh air. Because sometimes I get in the habit of that. If people go out, I'm like, I'll oh, come join you. So then my hair will have a yeah, smell to it. Yeah, you'll come for a chat and then, yeah. But it was mm. too cold. I stayed in that full night. Like, I was not yeah. stepping outside. So yeah. my hair didn't smell of anything, which was quite nice. Because I didn't definitely not have time to wash that. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, ate a whole packet of pool mints on the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then on Saturday, yes. we started our little weekend adventure. Woo woo! Yeah, so John came and picked me up with my parents. And then we went on holiday. Woo-hoo. So where did we go, John? Could, I, I like hearing you say the name. What, to Pit Lochery? Yeah. It's so right. good. Pit Lochery. <laughs> I don't understand why you like me saying it so much. Because, like, you're Welsh, so you can see it quite easily, but you have quite an English accent, so it's just it's just funny to hear you say it. Right, okay, yeah. 
I, I lost guess, me. <laughs> I guess I'm a bit of a, an amalgamation of everything, aren't I? You are. Aye. So, yeah, we went there for Enchanted Forest. Yep. So, John and I have never been, but my parents and maybe my brother had been before. Yeah, didn't they go up last year? Parents definitely. Brother, not sure. I thought... Yeah, I thought the whole family yeah, were Yeah, they go year. together. I think so. If yeah, if we're wrong, I'm sure they'll... Uh... Not bother correcting us because they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Craig and Kelly. Yeah, Dad definitely listens. Definitely does. Yeah. Um, hi, Stuart. Hi, Dad. <laughs> so, yeah, we went up there. And they said it was much better last year, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um... And now I don't know if it was just Dad had hyped it up so much or the fact that we've been to Kew Gardens, but I was, I was a wee bit disappointed. Yeah, I feel like, so we said this on the night as well, I feel like it started really promisingly. Yeah, that moon, oh, <laughs> genuinely took my breath away. So they had, like, as, as we walked in, there was, like, a giant lit up, like, spherical moon. That spherical was, moon. Yeah. But like <laughs> rather than flat, it was Yeah, it was a big, it was a big giant glowing ball. With a light in the middle, which yeah. made it look really, really beautiful. It was like suspended from like fish wire or something like you Yeah, above see. above like a little pond. Above a loch. Yeah, and it was so um The water was so like crisp. so still yeah. that, that you could like see the mirror perfectly and it was really beautiful and we got some really good pictures so we'll really post nice a couple pictures. up on our Instagram page and, and the Facebook page and all that sort of stuff yeah. um, and that was really stunning and and then you looked at the, the globe the world and it was like oh, yeah it didn't have the same impact that, it? That, that's not quite as good and then the next bit that I can remember is the light tubes where you had to lie on the floor. Well, I don't think you had to. I don't think you're supposed to because the guide was like, oh, there's quite a few people lying on the floor tonight. <laughs> I just I just got on the floor. That was you like, just followed the crowd, didn't you? Everybody yeah. else was lying on the floor. I was like, this is how you're supposed to do it. Excellent. So just lay on the floor next to my uh, my nephews. It was great. Yeah, you, you did look cute. I got some cute photos of that too. Yeah, it was good. So you just like looked up at these... Like moving lights, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and and that was quite fun, I guess. And yeah, then... and there was like um like twinkly lights in the trees, and you know, like uh, the theme was cosmos, so it was like Rocket Man like sounds like control, beep boop beep boop, like playing around <laughs> as you were walking through the <laughs> oh, that's your cosmos. It sounds like an episode of Buck Rogers. Bibbidi bibbidi. Beep boop boop. <laughs> yeah, so there was, there was a, a soundscape. Um, yeah. as as you'd say in the in the arts world. Um, that yeah, the, went the, the, the of... funnel bit was quite. The boys really liked that. Yeah, because it was interesting. Yeah, you could hear different. Beep bits boops. of voices and different beep boops uh, as you walk through this tunnel of of like speakers and stuff. So that yeah, was there was like tubes and funnels, and it was quite cool to see like, the the sound traveling, like because you could hear it. And they were like, "Lift me up, want to hear it in this funnel, want to hear it in this one." And it generally looked like, um, like what's that tube in that looked like tube in, like flexible like washing machine or something like tube in. It, yeah, and there then was... like kitchen funnels, like it looked really like. Yeah, there was like extractor fan. Yeah. Uh, funnels, yeah. and there was like piping, like yeah. plumbing piping as well that they used with like these big, like, yeah, measuring funnels. funnel things yeah. at the end. So yeah, I mean that was all right, good for I the guess. Kids. Yeah. Yeah, good for the kids. They enjoyed it a lot more than us, and then. As we went on from there, it just kind of went a bit downhill, didn't it? Yeah, there was just different types of lights flashing in the trees. Yeah. and At the start, though, it was so immersive because you were like walking through a path between trees and it did feel quite magical. Yeah. And then yeah. I think the start started too high. Yeah. And it just yeah. kind of went a bit mirror. Just, just went a bit bare after that. Because the, the main part of it, the pièce de résistance, was when they spray the water... Yeah, the and projection, fan, yeah. And they project on it. But by this, by the time we got to there, I'm hungry and I want this fire cooked pizza, which only available at the start. <laughs> and at this fan of water, they've got a burger van, not a burger van, like a yeah. 
idiots that you can eat that is um burgers. Yeah, it was yeah, burgers and chips over at the other end, yeah. And then dad went up to get one and they'd ran out of burger buns. So he's like, Oh, we can give you a burger and a hot dog bun if you want it and he was like No nah, you're all right. <laughs> and it was it was really cold. Yeah. Um so it was just that kind of watching and it wasn't really that great the project projection no no i mean it didn't really grip me no it was just uh, like... there was like one really nice image of an astronaut in the middle of middle of a space walk yeah. that I was like, oh that's quite nice and then the eye at the end was pretty good as well i think the most disappointing bit for me though and i said it as soon as we saw it was their representation of the sun <gasps> oh my goodness yes yeah, so considering the fact that we've just seen this massive like 10 foot sphere of glowing beautifulness of a moon, there yeah. is a hula hoop on fire. Essentially, yeah. It was yeah. It was like sticking out the water a bit. It was just a ring of fire. Rubbish fire. Yeah. And and I think that was one thing that we did compare to when I performed at Q those years ago. Yeah, because they, they had like... an entire fire garden, which yeah. was just incredible. Was was had like lanterns and flames and all sorts of fiery. And goodness. it was like all around you, and like the path weaved in between the fire garden. Yeah, yeah. And the sun was just a hill hip on fire. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting like a ball of flames, like something yeah. quite. I think after that point, I was like, "Yeah, I'm out. That's me. Yeah. I'm done." And then we went round and got pizza. Yeah. And the, what did they ask? So we, we ordered, you could only get margarita or meat feast. I was like, yeah. So as we go on to go into this next bit, if this is now a thing, if this is a gourmet food thing that me and Carol aren't up with, then I'm just going to, I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> so if it is a thing, don't bother writing in because I'll tell you you're ridiculous. So... Normally, you get a pizza and they're like, oh, do you want some Parmesan cheese on it, maybe? Or some black pepper. Or some black pepper. No, no, no. She opened up a, a, a little metal tub and went, would you like rocket? <laughs> yeah, so, no. Uh, no, thank you. I think we both just, for a second, stood there, like, really stunned, like, uh, no. I was definitely not expecting the word rocket to come out of your mouth. <laughs> would, would you, you like, like some... Rocket? Rocket. But then we thought maybe it was like themed, like cosmos, rocket, like play on words, it's hilarious. What's I, a rocket? I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. But if it's a gourmet thing, then it's just silly. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. And they'd run out of water so mum couldn't get a tea. It was just a Yeah, that was really bad. Part. They couldn't even yeah. serve tea towards the end of the night, which and it was, was cold. Yeah. It was like zero. It was cold. It was it was very, yeah. very cold. Yeah. Uh but overall Spending time with the family was great. Obviously. And so it was a really, really lovely yeah, night. Yeah, so my parents treated us all to a stay in a hotel um, yeah. in Pitlochry. And obviously they hike up the prices because it's close to Enchanted Forest and all that kind of stuff. But it was a nice hotel. And breakfast was definitely a five plectrum situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was Yeah, I was just about to agree that breakfast was superb. Yeah. I think you can always judge a buffet breakfast on the eggs. Oh, okay. For me, that's that's where because bacon and sausage and stuff, they're not yeah you can't expensive really high class foods. Yeah, nor are eggs really. But a lot of the time with a buffet breakfast, you'll get powdered eggs, and the fried eggs would be really rubbery or like underdone or just terrible. These were like perfect spheres that have been cooked, obviously in like one of those little. Uh, cutters and it yeah. just I don't know it was just really really good it yeah was and the, excellent. the scrambled egg was really like creamy like yeah it was proper scrambled yeah, egg they'd was... made uh, just a load of scrambled egg it, it was, was really good and they had waffles and Nutella and set up it was that's the only thing I was gutted about when I went over to get waffles they had none left oh. I was devastated and then I had to run away to go and watch the rugby yes you were very stressed about watching the rugby <sighs> yeah <laughs> are you just remembering yeah it was a close game. It was only it was my only down point of the the weekend. Yeah, because we were so close. You were you really were. We were yeah. right there. We you, were like the thing is a meter from the line, and then yeah. for some reason they went for a drop goal and missed it, and then it just all went wrong, and then oh, we just lost by three points. It was devastating. Yeah, it was gripping, gutting. Yeah, and then after that. 
we so we stayed overnight. We had beautiful breakfast. Then we went to Hallowayo. Yeah, we did. We went to Blair Drummond. Yeah, Blair Drummond's Fairy Park had a little Halloween event going on. Yep. Um, and we got tickets to that. Now I'm not really a zoo person. No, no, I, I yeah, you've always had a um, bit of a, an aversion to zoos. Yeah, like Edinburgh Zoo is on the line for me. Like right. there's some parts of it that I enjoy, and there's some parts of it that make me feel really uncomfortable. Right. Um, Chester Zoo had a lot more things that made me feel comfortable, but still a few wee things. Right. That didn't sit right. Okay. With me, um, so Blair Drummond Safari Park is one step up. There's still some things that make me feel uncomfortable. Um, but I feel that the animals are generally well looked after. So you think Blair Drummond's like one step up from Chester? In, in terms of like how I think the animals are. Oh, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to disagree with you on that one, personally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've only been to Chester Zoo once, so yeah. maybe I didn't get the right feel of it. Yeah, I don't Maybe know. the fact that it's called a zoo. Maybe. Maybe. But Blair Drummond's Fairy Park closes in the winter. Yeah. Which I, like, that is a point why I'm like, oh, they must really treat their animals well because if it's too cold, like, it's too cold for them to be outside, so they, they close it. They don't force them to go outside or yeah. or anything like that. You know, they, they mm-hmm. kind of say, you know, we're just going to re- reduce to core staff and look after the animals. Yeah. In, the, in an environment that they like. Um, But they had Halloween themed so they had like a little pumpkin patch and face painting, slime making. They had the tomb. Yeah, they had little like haunted marquee thing. Which yeah, was... with l- actors that jumped out at you. <laughs> it was terrifying. <laughs> I had a lovely time. I was laughing the entire way around. <laughs> oh gosh, I bet you were. I was. I was chuckling away. And then, the did you sit in the chair? No, because Kelly was like, it's a massive disappointment. She just bangs her stick. I was like, all right. Yeah, because I went. I was in expecting it. the chair to like tip back or someone jump so, out. Or and somebody grab to jump out from behind. Yeah. yeah, I sat in a chair and was massively disappointed. I was like, oh, okay then. Yeah. But Samuel, who is six. Yeah. Now there's big signs out saying that saying like you know children under ten, 10 yeah. will be will will find this quite scary. Children under, under five under five will find this very scary. Very scary. Now Samuel is six. But he's nearly seven. Yeah. And he's been to America. He's been on Tower of Terror and done all sorts of brave, scary things. Yeah, he's a bit of a daredevil in the first instance. So mum and you went through first. Yeah. And Kelly was like, no, you can handle this. You've got this. Yeah. So Samuel went in. I was holding one hand. Kelly was holding the other hand. Kelly screamed the most. Yeah. She was just like, bah! And she'd already been and in she'd with me. she'd already been there. But she said that they jumped out at different points. Right. I think because obviously it's like a rolling thing. So there's people just constantly going through that sometimes you kind of miss a jump. Yeah. Because they've like scared the people in front of you. So like, oh, then get us. And they're like hiding away again. Miss a few people and jump out. But yeah, they got her. They got her really good. And she was like, F off! There's an effing child here! Like, not like joking. Like, genuinely swore twice in front of her child. Like, she was so scared. <laughs> brilliant that's so funny it was really good yeah Yeah. but no it was it was a really lovely day and yeah we got to see the penguins yeah that made you really happy it did and the seagulls because it's like open the seagulls were like coming down trying to steal their fish they had a hose and they're like trying to like hose down these seagulls (laughs) um but they managed to get a few fish as well which was quite funny it was good um and the tiger tiger was awesome yeah so at first i was like why is that tiger in there by itself and then there's like a big like information board saying that this type of tiger is, is like quite a solitary yeah, animal, a solitary yeah. animal. Mm. but it, it seemed to be loving life and not in a like i'm going crazy loving life it was no, just like had... tootling about it's we yeah like... and it had like this this big like barrel thing that was tied to the tree and it was like playing around with that and like walking around its entire enclosure to come out from a different angle and i was like yeah that was just weird the only bit that did make me a little bit sad is that there was an elephant on its own yeah didn't like that doesn't feel natural because elephants are herding animals they yeah. like to be around i feel other like elephants it was the very last day it was open so like it's shut for the winter now so yeah. i don't know if maybe something like that but the enclosure and the indoor bit was massive and so interactive like there was lots of things for the elephant to do on the inside yeah 
Um, which made me think it was weird that it was only one elephant. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the one wasn't ones well got or, away or something. I don't know. Pregnant but, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, there was only one, which was really sad. Made me a little bit sad that day. It was the only bit that did make me yeah. a bit sad. But we missed the elephant talk, so they might have explained it. Maybe, yeah. maybe. But yeah, it was really sad that there was only one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've just put a downer on your day there. No, because that is, it, I mean, they, they can't do it perfect. It's only no. a little safari park. But we drove through the lions. Yeah, we went through the little drive through feeding time. Yeah, that so was pretty cool. there was also a goat there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was quite brutal to see. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they've got to feed the lions something. Yeah, and they can't just throw in steaks at them, can they? No. Um, and then the rhino, that was a bit scary. Yeah, so there's like one section us, yeah. where a couple of different animals live together. So what was there? There was a rhino. Yeah, there was a few bulls there was like deer and oxen and... and stuff like that. Yeah. Like a lot of horned animals all together. All living together. And the rhino, there's like big signs saying like if the rhino like charges towards you, just like move, move away slowly. slowly yeah. Like you're in a car. Like you're not just like walking. You're in your own car. You're not in a safari car. And you're in your own car. Yeah. Um. And this rhino was looking at us. Yeah. And it was walking. Had a little stroll over, didn't it? A straight line towards us, but it wasn't like running or. No, it didn't. Seemed yeah, like it didn't rear or anything. It wasn't or anything, getting ready no. to run, but it was just having a wander about, a and we were in its way. It, yeah. yeah. I, I I noticed and then that it, it peed enjoyed, on the road. Yeah, I it enjoyed standing on the road and peeing on the road. Just marking this is my road. Yeah. People driving through. Yeah, just my standing road. in front of somebody else's car, just peed in front of it and walked off. I was like, yeah. And then we went <laughs> to the monkey bit. Yeah, we had a monkey on the car. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, if anybody hasn't seen that video online, just go and check it out. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah. It's like one of Carol's favourite videos. <laughs> monkey on the car. Fuck off. <laughs> so good. So there was a monkey on our car. Um, but luckily it didn't like destroy the car or no. pull off a windscreen wiper. It just, just kind of had a look right at us. Yeah. And then got had on a little way. off and then jumped on the bus next to us. Yeah, and I had got yeah got in trouble for that, didn't it? Yeah. I think it was. I think they were worried that it was going to get stuck. Yeah. And um, because it was quite high up the bus. Yeah. Um, and then there was like one on the van. Yeah, somebody there... went through in like a, a man f- in a van, an actual like truck. Yeah. Yeah, so the monkey <laughs> climbed onto it, and they obviously didn't realise. And the monkey then came down the front. Oh, it was so yeah. funny because we could see that from like our our front windshield, and and we could see over. And they obviously hadn't realised that the the monkey had got on the top of their van. So when it climbed down in front over the front windshield, you saw the guy just jump. His arms went up in the air and everything. You can, what? You can tell that there was a few swear words when that happened. And then he was laughing at himself and everything. That was quite fun to see. Yeah. And then we got the boat over to Chimp Island. Yeah. Chimpanzee Island, which was great. Yeah. So the boat, one side of it is all like um, a cage and the other side is clear. Yep. Because they go around a clockwise they're in yeah. the island clockwise so you can, you can see the the chimps and they throw stones and poo at the boat sometimes yeah. so one side has to have a cage yeah we didn't get any feces flung at us from the chimps <laughs> or stones they were just chilling yeah they? just relaxing quite yeah. high up actually they were right at the top of their like climbing bit the they? tree thing yeah yeah and then i done the flying fox yeah you did so it's across um the bit of water yeah. and there's no straps or anything you've just got to hold on which is terrifying because if you let go you're going to splash so <laughs> naturally screamed the whole way down it was great and my nephew's a bit sad because he was too short to to do it yeah yeah he does like to be involved doesn't he but yeah. we had a lovely time like while you were on the flying fox we played diggers oh fun so that was like the best coin game i've ever seen you know how you get like coin games that are outside the supermarkets where you put 20p in and it goes back and forth for a bit and mm. you know if the child's young enough young Do enough they lady. think they're on like a roller coaster or something it's great <laughs> um but they had them just outside of where the boats were and they were actual like jcb digger arms like Aww. full-on pneumatic and everything they could dig up all the sand in front of them yeah. so they had a lovely time cute yeah that was really good yeah, and they went for lunch. 
Yeah, which was great. Yeah, but because it was the last day of the season, yeah, they were like, all cakes were pound. That was just wonderful. And they had like tray bakes and like um, carrot cake, Oreo cake. Yeah. Really nice stuff. It was so good. So naturally bought a few to take home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you know how we've been talking about Slimming World for like the last few weeks? That not went, this week. That went out the window this weekend. Yeah, not this week. Uh, for what's on your plate, I'm actually thinking. So so we went for, a, when we first got to Pit Lockery, we went for a little pub lunch. Yeah. In a beautiful pub called The Old Smitty. Yeah. Uh, and I had an absolutely banging meal there, and so did you. So I think we took some pictures of them. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead. I think we're going to post them for what's on your plate uh, this week. Yeah. Although mine, I struggled because I was hungover, so <laughs> I didn't get to eat all mine. See, where I, when I'm hungover, I will do nothing but eat. But you got to sleep a bit longer than I did because I had to get up for training, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. that's, yeah, fair enough. If I had uh, slept a bit longer, I'm sure I would have ate fine too. Yeah, I ate <laughs> loads. It was amazing. My goodness. So that was that was how busy our week was. Yeah, so, I mean, we're probably... <laughs> so thanks more... for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, it's been a crazy busy week, which has been great. Um, so we haven't got an official cook ourselves. What's on your plate? this week but we will make up for that yes next week hopefully because we are going to do a whole three course what's on your plate so it's really exciting because we didn't do it last week and we're not doing it this week properly so we're going to do a big proper one next week and do a three course what's on your plate i am buzzing for you to make me all that food we'll make the food (laughs) Yeah. Oh, all right, then. Okay, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we've kind of briefly touched on entertainment already. Yeah, so I feel like we don't really need to like re-review the show. Just want to put it out there again. That was you... there any bugs for the air? No, it was just I had such a lovely time seeing yeah. my friends and then being like... The only bug was that you weren't in it. Yeah, my only <laughs> bug was that I had a bit of FOMO. Yeah. Oh. So I feel like I need to go and perform somewhere soon, just in some capacity, because if I don't, I'm going to go mad. And we've just watched the Great British Bake Off final. Oof. Oof, day. Right. So, not too many spoilers. I think we'll. No, I think we can spoil away because people have watched it by tomorrow. Okay. Well, if you haven't watched it already, if you have missed it on the night and you've got it recorded. Skip past this next, like, five minutes. We won't go massively in depth to it. But, uh, yeah, so, spoiler alert. Don't listen to this if you're going to watch the Bake Off. Right, so, oofed. That was tough to watch. Yeah, it was. Because we were rooting for Steph, weren't we? I massively was. And and through the whole season, I've been, you know, a big advocate of how good I think she is. Yeah, I mean, she got um, some of the week. (laughs) She got a uh, star baker. <laughs> yeah, she got star baker four, four times. times that season. Yeah. And, you know, easily one of the best, one of the most consistent. Yeah, but she just fell apart. Just absolutely just let the pressure get to her and, she did. you know. I think she did put too much pressure on herself because she had won it so many times. Yeah. That she she kind of had done the consistently the best throughout the season. Yeah, it really I think should the have been pressure there. of yeah. other people thinking that she was going to win kind of got to her a bit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that was that was difficult to watch, to watch somebody who quite obviously, in my opinion, should have won it. Yeah, just not pull it through enough. Just just yeah. fall apart. She fell apart, you she know. Did. She spent most of that episode in tears. Yeah. Wiping that fringe out of her eyes. Yeah, oh. just having a little tears, yeah. Yeah, um, but then David won, so I guess that was that. Not gonna lie, really disappointed. Yeah, didn't like David. I mean, he came first in the technical, so yeah, and he was second in the technical like every other week, wasn't he? But they he? don't base it on every other week. They base I it on. I know those that, and if they had based it on other weeks, Steph would have won. Yeah, but yeah, so I mean, he is. He, he quite obviously was good, like. Begrudgingly, yeah. at the end, I did sort of have to concede the fact that he did pull it out in the final. 
massively. Yeah, like as they said, like his always looks good. It just doesn't taste good. Yeah. And then he just obviously tonight got his flavors it tasted and good. Yeah. Everything right. And that last uh, his final showstopper was superb. Yeah. Oh, it looked beautiful. Probably I love what... it when they get that wee spray painting thing out. Yeah, you love a bit oh. of artsy stuff, don't you? Well, yeah. maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Begrudgingly, fair enough. Probably was deserved. Yeah. We found a new season to watch. We have watched it before, but we've been watching Celebrity Haunted. Yes. Which is just magnificent. I love that show. Yeah. I mean, I prefer The Hunted. Well, when um, it's just normal people. When it's just people. I think it's a bit more difficult for celebrities. I think... Well, in a way, it's easier, but more difficult. Like, obviously, they know people everywhere. And they can I was just... going to say, they've probably got better contacts, but they're yeah. much more recognisable. Yeah, but they could say, oh, you recognise me. Oh, can I stay in your garage tonight? Um, don't tell anyone I was here. Or tell some... tell people tomorrow that I was here when I've gone. Whereas if just a stranger comes up to you and be like... Oh, I'm doing this TV program. Can I can I hide in your house? They'll be like, no, yeah. you weirdo, get away from me. Yeah. But yeah, they they're much more easily recognised than yeah. they can be like more hated. If you know what I mean, like, oh, I don't like them. I, I have no like compassion. I'll just turn them in. Like, I'll tell the the hunters that they're here. That's a know? good point actually, because there is already a pair that I don't like. Is this Toff and Stanley? No, I like Toph and Stanley. Okay, I love them. They're like, I yeah. think they're completely ridiculous, but yeah. funny and entertaining because of that. Yeah. Um, no, it's the chefs that I don't like. Yeah, I think I think it's because I don't didn't know them before, and they're a bit like ah, manic. Yeah, I just I'm, I've never been a big fan of uh, what's his name uh, Jean Christophe Novelli. Right. Um, and the yeah, just, they're just so shouty. Yeah, very but shouty. That's chefs, though, isn't it? Very annoying. Uh, completely over the top and ridiculous. The rugby players, the younger one, is annoying me a wee bit. He's so mean. He's such a nag. He's so mean. Yeah. Like Gavin Henson is. He's he's a, right. a former uh, Wales international rugby player and Martin Afire, good old Chariot Afire. Yeah. Who who in his day uh, they've completely done nothing but talk about it but he was like the fastest rugby player on earth what he played rugby yeah yeah <laughs> and he was really quick was he yeah. hence the nickname chariot sophia yeah but maybe that's why they're pushing on the fact that he's like slow now i mean he's 52 53 if they said if, yeah early 50s yeah like fair play to him yeah i think ex-sportsmen are always like the least fit because they've got such a big comparison of like, you used to be with this, you used to be with that. Whereas now they just like, enjoy their food and live a life. Sure, sure. I mean, they're both obviously still in shape. Yeah, like he was jogging with a massive backpack on him, backpack on him for ages. Yeah, and he wasn't as fit and fast as Gavin Henson was, but, you know, he was still doing it at Definitely. like 50 odd. Yeah. So fair play to him. I just, yeah, I just think Gavin's been really mean to him. Maybe it's just the editing. Just shouts yeah. at him all the time. A bit of like, excitement or something, you know. Yeah, kind of I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So who thinks going to win? I think they're in with a good shot, actually. Two yeah. rugby players. If they, can, if they can just get on a bit better and I feel like something's got to give there somewhere, like they're either going to split up because they... Cause you know, he has been quite mean to him and mm. you can feel Martin Afire getting a bit more annoyed by it. Uh, so I feel like they're, they're either going to come to a head and they're going to settle whatever's going on there or they're going to split up. Yeah. But gonna, I think crack. either yeah. both of them or either of them has a fair shot of winning. Mm-hmm. Um, the chefs are going to be out soon. I really hope so. They came really close. Uh, I feel like Toph and Stanley have got a good chance of winning. I think if Toph can control Stanley a bit more, uh, they're in with a good chance of doing it. Because they've got good connections. Yeah. And they've got the right... Well, she's got the right ideas. Yeah, just move, 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 move. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that comes from him more. But, you know, the fact that she's like, don't use that card because of this. Don't use your phone because of this. Don't do that because of this. Mm. She's obviously watched it before and obviously... 
yeah, got a bit of an idea of what done we can a bit do. of research yeah. and said and said, you know, like we don't do this, we should do this. Um, so you know, I think yeah. they're in with a fair shout. I can't remember who else is in it. That's bad, isn't it? The well, two women just got caught. Yeah, the two women that got caught already. Is there more people? Is there five couples? Are we forgetting a pair? Mm, maybe. We're doing a bake-off where I couldn't remember anyone's name. Well, we'll keep you updated next week. I'm sure if you're watching it, you'll be shouting it at your, your phone. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I feel like we are forgetting a pair. But I can't think of who it is. No, that's bad, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I can't think of four. Hmm. What really bugs me about that though is that it constantly like, I know they're raising money for charity and it is all about that but the fact that like every ad break is like one in two people will have cancer and it's like oh bit of like I mean cancer awareness is very important Yeah but the fact when it's just the two of us watching it and then every 15 <laughs> minutes you're reminded that one of you is going to get cancer you know <laughs> In our lifetime though I mean yeah. You know, a lot of us might get some form of cancer when we're very, very old. Yeah, or you can get, like, cancer that is easier to fight. Not easier to fight, but is has a lot more... Yeah, so um, not such an aggressive strain or is, yeah. has a more... Successful... Successful, like, treatment, treatment rate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, cancer isn't the big, bad, scary word that everyone you know thinks it is people live with it not, people survive it not yeah not as yeah. much anymore i mean yeah. it obviously is and you know we you know we're both well aware that there's a lot of people out in the world that have been affected by cancer um, yeah but yeah yeah i mean i know there um, it's a great way to raise money for it it's a great way to raise awareness like it's definitely encourage of definitely encourage a lot of people to kind of donate yeah um yeah their money to it but yeah, maybe not every single time. Every not every single, single break. Minutes, yeah. And then there's always like one wee story, isn't there? Who they focus on, like yeah. a family or a child or a person who's kind of, you know, like they're, they're kind of happy story. You know, it's not always like doom and gloom, the stories. No, no. A lot of the time they are sort of showing that, you know, the, can, yeah. cancer is what your money does. the end, which yeah. is really good. And, yeah. and what that, you know, money goes to and the research yeah. that that has funded and developed. Mainly... Entertainment wise, this week I have been watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. Nine Nine from start to finish. Um, back on season six, I'm having a phenomenal time. I can't believe there's only six seasons. I know it just feels like it's been around forever. Yeah, because each season's quite long, isn't it? Yeah, they're like twenty, 20 episodes, something episodes. Yeah. yeah, I think season six is, was a little bit short, wasn't it? But that's because. It's run by a different studio oh, now. Oh, so, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I can't believe it got dropped by a studio. It's just ridiculous. Stupid. Yeah, I I swear, like, part of it was because money and Dramatics. publicity. and Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, love it. Love that show. Couldn't even say that I've got a favourite because they're all amazing. And it's just the best ever. If you haven't watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, then you probably just don't watch telly, so don't listen to the entertainment bug. <laughs> I mean, I thoroughly enjoy it as well, and I can watch it over and over again. Yeah. As well, which says a lot. Aye, which is a rarity. <laughs> so you've been uh, a little bit creative this week as well, haven't you? Yeah, so after I finished my monstrosity of a blanket, I... Monstrosity? Well, you know what, like the masterpiece, the massive challenge that I set my... Like, I only learned... I taught myself how to crochet from a magazine in June. Like, you know, I'm not this person who's been doing it for years and is quick at it and gets it right first time and all that kind of thing. So making that blanket really was a challenge mm. for myself. Yep. Um, September, I'd only done it in like eight weeks or something. No, you did an amazing so job there, babe. It was, you know, my masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. For, for now. For now. Um, so I've been making some pumpkins. Yeah, which is just amazing. Yeah, so, so I made a little tiny one. Yeah, I've got a little one that so like, sits on my desk at work yeah, now. It's like fits in your palm, doesn't it? It's like they're kind of that size. Yeah, like a handheld little pumpkin. And I stuffed it and everything, yeah. so it's like a little cushion. Yeah, 
cute. Uh, a few people in work today sort of spotted it and made comments. Oh, did they? They did. Yeah. You yeah. named it, didn't you? Yeah. Percy. Percy the pumpkin. Percy the pumpkin. Yeah. Aww. He's cute. Yeah, you'll need to take a photo on Friday. Yeah, so I will. I forgot to take a photo. I will. I'll take a picture in the morning and uh, I'll post it um, on Friday at some point. Nice. Yeah, so my painting, like, now that crocheting, I've got it. All you need is your hook and a ball of, a ball of wool. Like, mm-hmm. And I can do it watching TV and it takes no preparation. I don't need to tidy up. You know, I just shove it in a bag. Done. Whereas Done. the painting, I need like a couple of hours to be able yeah, to Yeah, you have to get in. everything out, settle your colours, get everything sorted. Yeah, so maybe the weekend I'll get a chance, but I'm, I'm Maybe when you've again. got a bit of time, but yeah. I think you're working Saturday this week as well, aren't you? So Yeah, because I have the inability of saying no. Yeah, yeah, so you've only got one day off yeah. this week. Uh-huh. Mm. So Carol. Mm. Oh, what's a moving? Halloween! That was my spooky music. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, you you love Halloween, don't you? I love Halloween. And I know a lot of people do. Yeah. I am not 100% on board with Halloween. No. So, what what is it? Convince me, Carol. What is so great about Halloween? It's something to get excited about. Like, what what was the, what was the last thing we got excited about? <sighs> Summer holiday. Well, yeah, there was that, and then our little weekend away at Pit Lockery. I get excited about going to cinema. I get excited. No, not like that. Like Christmas, Easter. Like it's it's a it's a thing that everyone does together. Like the cinema, you go to yourself. Right, okay, so we're talking like, about, like, national events. Not national, but just, like, in work, you can all get together and you still... Like, we're doing a bake sale or we'll all dress up or, like, Christmas time, you know, we'll have a Christmas jumper day or do a secret Santa. Like, it's just something that, like, you can get excited about together. It's like a joint thing to embrace. And that's why I love it, because, you know, it just brings people together. See, it's so funny because it's those exact reasons of why I don't like Halloween. Oh, whatever, you're so grumpy. No, it's 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 not the fact that I don't like getting involved and having fun with the people I work with and the people I hang around with and and all that sort of stuff. It's not that I don't want to be involved in the community or do bake sales or get dressed up. It just I don't know. It just feels like a bit of a naff excuse. I don't want any excuse for a party is an excuse for a party. <laughs> right, okay. So this week, um, I've been wearing a different headband every day to work because I'm that type of person. Um, so I've had like a spider web one, I've had a witch's one, a cat one. It's just very, very exciting. And I've got my pumpkin earrings that I've worn every day. I just love it. And we've been activities with the children. So we've got like slime and scented Play-Doh, coloured water, like books as well. Like we, can, like we changed our whole story corner. So it's got like pumpkins and bats and spiders and then books about these things. So have you ever heard of the books? That's not my. I'm sure Matthew had some when he was Yeah, old. I was just about to say, uh, I think um, I remember I was buying a couple yeah, for so, Matthew for yeah, Christmas. Like, the first page is like, that's not my. So... It's Halloween themes. So we go like, that's not my bat. Its ears are too hairy. The next page, that's not my bat. Its tummy's too fluffy. And the last page, that is my bat. Its fangs are so shiny or whatever. And it's like a textured book. So we've got like a monster one, a bat one, a spider one, a pumpkin one, a ghost one. It's just like a nice little theme mm-hmm. for like, you know, the children to explore. And yeah. I just love it. And like our house, like our so we've got a role play corner, and it's got like costumes they can dress up in, and oh, it's just so exciting. They've been some of the children have been coming in dressed up already, so right. we had like a duck today. So it's like this onesie with like a big tail on its bum. It was so cute. And yep. um, we've had a devil, a witch, a dragon, a ghost. A dragon? A dragon. Oh, amazing. Yeah. This, like, shiny, metallic, purple and green dragon. Awesome. He was cute. And then a little girl today, like, she can um, walk or anything, so she crawls about and she was dressed as a pump. 
pumpkin. She had a little pumpkin onesie on, little baby grow. Cute. Oh, too cute. Can't cope. <laughs> so, seeing as we're talking about dressing up, and and I know you love dressing up, talk us through some of your highlight Halloween outfits. Okay. So, my, my top five, not in any particular order. Go for it. But these are my top five. Um, grapes. I once dressed up as grapes, and it was amazing. <laughs> that was really funny. So, you said it once slightly English and once very Scottish. <laughs> grapes. 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 <laughs> I dressed as grapes. Uh, yeah. I dressed up as grapes. So grapes. I put my hair in a bun on top of my head, mm-hmm. sprayed it green. Brilliant. I wore a purple vest top. Yeah. Um, a purple skirt, mm-hmm. purple tights, purple shoes. And I got lots of little purple balloons and tied them all to me. So I either looked like some piles <laughs> or some grapes. <laughs> Let's say grapes. Grapes. I loved it. So I went to a Halloween party just in someone's house. So I was like sitting down like... Like all these balloons. Do you know, not one popped. Impressive. I think it's because they were blown up so small. Right, I see. So they're still quite solid. And I bought them from Futura, which is like um, a quite expensive fancy dress shop, I'd say. In some aspects, yeah. Yeah, it's like a high quality one. It's not like a cheap naff one. It's like a high quality expensive one. And the balloons were like proper thick yeah. balloons that I just blew up a little bit to look like little grapes stuck all over me. Um, and getting in the taxi coming home, half cut, dressed as grapes, shouting safety first, trying to put my seatbelt on, even though I'm surrounded by it in my own personal airbag. Just it's laughter. Very, laughter. It's very Carol. Sitting on the edge of a sofa, like... Meh, 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 all these balloons with my little buffet plate resting on the top of the balloons <laughs> munching away <laughs> good times sounds great um, once I dressed up as a spoon right <laughs> so I wore all black and just had a strip of tin foil going down my body right and I had a headband that had like a big spoon shaped thing and I painted my face silver Sounds great. And I was a, and I was a teenager. I was like eighteen. I was a proper almost adult at this time. Yeah, <laughs> maybe seventeen. Um, what's another good one I've had? One of my fondest ones as a kind of trick or treater is I went as like a waitress on rollerblades. So right. I had a tray that I'd like super glued a glass. A couple of glasses too. Right. Um, and I had like a waitress outfit and my my roller skates. Right. And then um, my parents and my friends' parents used to take it in turns taking us out. And this poor dad, who was not my dad, I clung on to the entire because like, I couldn't roller skate very well. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I just figured like you were really good and you just really wanted to go out on your roller skates. <laughs> no, just an idea popped in your head and you're like, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Even though you can't roller skate that well. Yeah, pretty much. You have not changed. <laughs> no, not very much. No. <laughs> no. Um, another one of my faves was Little Red Riding Hoodie. <laughs> right. Um, so I went as like a, a Ned, like a, what, what do you call a Ned? A Chav. A Chav, yeah. So I had a, a red hoodie. Right. And a basket with um, Buckfast, um, right. w, Blue WKD, mm-hmm. and some Mad Dog yep. in my basket. Taking pretty much all of them off. All you needed was another bottle of like Frosty Jacks or White Lightning or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If it was nowadays, it'd be a, a can of Dragon Soup. What in the fuck is Dragon Soup? <laughs> That's for all the youngins drink to get wasted. I am so old, I do not know what that is. Yeah, paint of it in your paralytic. <laughs> Brilliant. Sounds like my kind of drink. <laughs> and I made a chain that said Little Red, and it was what well, it was like massive, right? Um, gold. Loved it. Right. That used to be my nickname for my friend Helen. Little Red. Little Red. Oh, that's cute. I can imagine Helen being called that. Yeah. Helen, I know. 
Yeah, yeah. Helen, who came to the yeah. wedding, yeah, who used Aww. to live in my halls in uni. She is little, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, I was called she a little red, yeah. Cute. Um, tell you another one. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to mention one. Okay. Just because I don't really enjoy dressing up for Halloween. Uh, but one that I will always remember is me and you in Cyprus. Uh, we did our little couple's Halloween yeah. outfit for the end of season jolly. We did. And uh, we went uh, as the corpse bride and groom. We did. Uh, and that was just uh, before we got married. Yeah, so that was in October and we got married in February. Yeah. So it was like four months. On the, on the build-up, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was one that definitely sticks in my memory. I feel like that was a bit of an accident, how we got that to that stage. Really? Because I brought with me the gala dress that I'd worn the year before, which was like a black full-length dress. That's right. And it was last minute to decide whether we were going fancy dress or dress nice. So I was like, well, I'm wearing this dress. I feel like you kind of made a joke about it and I was like, yeah, go on, then I've got a suit. Yeah. And we just had some like... Zom- well, I had um, some blood dripping down my throat as if I'd been bitten by a vampire. Yeah, yeah. Um, white makeup, dramatic eyes and a little veil that I bought yeah. from Jumbo. Yeah. I just... Whited my face, put up a like, bit of blood there, black yeah. my eyes. Ripped up your shirt, Did a maybe? standard, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, ripped up the shirt. Didn't have the heart to rip up the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have the money to rip up the jacket. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, so that was one of my favourites, I yeah. think, that I've ever done. That's cute. Yeah. And then there was one year that we decided that we would all make up a superhero um, and write it on a piece of paper Scrunch up, put it in a hat, and then pick it out again. Right. So I pulled up Spanking Spatula Girl. Nice. So that was quite fun. That was probably the sluttiest I've ever dressed for Halloween. I had like a tutu and a pinny um, and some spatulas. So, you know, that was kind of that. And Graham picked mine out. It was um, was like CD Boy or something like that, or CD Girl. Obviously, because he was a boy, he went to CD boy. And he, he just, like, made an outfit with CDs. And glasses, he had, like, two CDs. Brilliant. His glasses. That's good. I can't remember what Robbie was, but he was, like, so, very similar to Superman or Superboy. Right. Like, Super Geek or something like that. Right. And he, like, drew mass equations all over his shirt. <laughs> nice, nice. We, I remember I once, not for Halloween, but I once... Uh, Went to a friend's superhero themed birthday party. Oh yeah. And the only stipulation was that you couldn't go as an actual existing superhero. Makes sense. So I went as the shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Which is the superhero in training. <laughs> so your second got there in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I had a cape. I had a big learner's badge over the oh, front of me. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it was fun. That is good. That is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to remember what I'd been a ch- as a child. I remember being like a witch and kind of things like that. Yeah, I but... honestly can't remember. The only person who ever would have remembered would have been my mum. Yeah. Because obviously she had to make the outfits, but... Yeah. I did think about asking my dad, but no no offence to my dad. He probably wouldn't remember. Three boys, she all looked the same, so Halloween... And just he, three different he costumes. He probably didn't <laughs> do the whole making the outfit no, thing. No, no. He was always working, so... Yeah. Mum said that for my first Halloween, she dyed my baby grow black. Yeah. And made a Minnie Mouse skirt for me and put ears on me. Yeah, I remember you talking oh, about that this weekend. It was adorable. That's too cute. I can yeah. imagine my mum... Because back then, you probably didn't... You couldn't get black baby grows. No. Yeah, or even if she could, she was making it herself because she's my mum. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> Hi, cute. Yeah. And Samuel and Matthew have had some really cute costumes. Yeah, yeah. Samuel makes me laugh when it comes to Halloween. Lion. Because he will change his mind probably about 20 times. Yeah, like the day before. Mum want to be this, and she's got to like make it from scratch the day before. Somehow, yeah. yeah. And their cousin... Oh my goodness, she went as Mary Poppins one year. She oh, did. Oh, she was that, too yeah. cute. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't want to bow. Yeah. But we didn't get any trick or treaters last year, did we? No, we didn't. No. I th- well, we live in the top floor of a flat. Like, I think people generally just leave us to it. Yeah, unless you know them. Yeah, you're not really going to no. go in there. I think maybe we'll buy, like, our bag of sweets just in case. Well, out we'll be out, so. Will we? Well, I'm going to go pick up Nicola. 
Of course, it's Thursday night, isn't it? Yeah, so, my yeah. best friend is coming home. She still works abroad, and she's been in Crete since like April. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm getting to see her. Yay! Yeah. So, so we're going on a little road trip to Edinburgh, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll be away. Mm. There was one year my parents went out for dinner or something on Halloween and they were like, here's a bowl of sweeties. Like mum had put them in little bags and stuff and she's like, just give them out. It'll be fine. And our doorbell didn't work. Right. And some children like knocked on the door and I didn't hear it because I was watching TV. And then they egged my house. (sighs) Yeah, not sad. Yeah. I got right. such a fright when they like hit off the window. Oh, Luckily, they only done like one egg each and ran away, so it was like two eggs. Yeah. But still, it was terrifying because I was quite young. I was like thirteen or something. Yeah, it's quite a thud as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's on Halloween when you think like there's murderers out there. <laughs> yeah, they'd pick the most inconspicuous night to go out Halloween. <laughs> I remember though, you'd like count up the money you would get. Yeah. From from Halloween and like trade sweets and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one. Now they get all sorts, don't they? But my mum makes. I know it's for her grandchildren, but she makes them like proper, like backpacks full of sweets. Yeah. And chocolate and fancy things, and I'm sure they get a toy as well. Oh, that's for your Halloween. Like, excuse me. No. That's not fair. No. Nobody ever gave me toys for Halloween. No. My mum probably did. But my street was really good because we live in a massive big crescent. Yeah. And there was quite a few families there mm-hmm. and they would go all out decorating. Like you, you you only had to go around the one street and you were good. Like you had bags full. All sorted. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's good. And I remember one year I had this idea. I had this idea in my head. You know what I'm like when I got an idea? Mm-hmm. So I had a little pumpkin that was probably like the size of my head back then, like a child size head, like little pumpkin. Yeah. That my me and my dad had carved out and tied rope to and right. I had wanted to carry it around with me. Right. Trick or treating. Back then you didn't have like lights that looked like candles. Right. So my dad had to relight it for every door. Because it blew out straight away. <laughs> and I wanted it to be lit. Of for, course. For every door. And we ran out of matches. So we were like asking neighbours for matches as we're going trick or treating so that I can have my pumpkin. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I think that pretty much sums up your family Halloween's there. <laughs> yeah. Me getting what I want and dad bends over backwards to do it for me. Sounds about right. <laughs> So on that note, I think we are going to wind up for this week, folks. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you get all the treats and no tricks. Absolutely. Have a wonderful time. And if you're going to dress up, dress up good. Well, you need to do a joke or else you can't get a treat. You can't get a treat. Give me your best joke. Um, What's big and white and if it falls out of a tree, it'll kill you? I don't know. A fridge. Great joke. I said joke similar to that that's funnier. But yeah, that was a good joke. Ha 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 Okay. <laughs> I've got so many favourite jokes, but one we were talking about this week, which is really funny, is how many, because we're at the zoo, um, how many hippos can you fit in a mini? I don't know. Two in the front, two in the back. <laughs> <laughs> how many elephants can you fit in a mini? I don't know. None is full of hippos! <laughs> Oh, Carol. (laughs) So, thank you very much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, uh, we are going to carry on with our event holiday slash theme. Uh, yes. We're going to be talking about the the majesty that is Bonfire Night. I am totally on board. Love it. Love it. Such a great night of the year. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love it. And it's even better that I get to share it with you. Oh, you're too cute. Oh, yeah. I'm adorable. Cute, Yeah, I am. So, yeah, we will see you next week. And remember to check out the website at hughesmusings.com or you can visit us on Facebook or Instagram. Where's that, Carol? Both are at Hughes's Musings. 
Yeah, they are. And you can also email us in at the Hughes Podcast as well. And that's at, at gmail. And oh, yeah. that's at gmail.com. Uh, so thank you very much for listening, guys. And uh, we'll see you soon. Chat to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.